Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Future Care Debate at the Town Hall meeting. Tonight, you will witness two teams of young people who truly understand the ins and outs of future care, and they will clash in a heated debate. The motion of the House today is, this House believes that future care is good enough. The first speaker of the affirmative is Jason A. Smith of Mount St. Agnes. The second speaker is Glenn Simmons of the Barclay Institute, and he will give the reply. The first speaker of the negative is Marcus Bean of Seas Bridge Academy, and he will give the reply. And the second speaker of the negative is William Campbell of Saltus Grammar School. Please welcome our debaters. All of the debaters you see up here now are members of Dynamic Debaters and Learners under the tutelage of Mr. Gladstone Thompson. Each speaker will speak for up to eight minutes with the first and last minutes protected from points of information. When all the speakers have spoken, each team will have the opportunity to give a three minute reply, which shall be protected from points of information and will have a bell at two minutes. The affirmative team will begin and close the debate. Now let's begin this debate. I now welcome Jason A. Smith of the affirmative team. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my honorable colleagues and honorable members of the audience. Imagine that you got a call one night that would seemingly change your life forever. You see, because on the other line was your grandfather, and he started to talk to you about the fact that your grandmother had just suffered from a brain aneurysm and had been rushed to the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, could you imagine being on the other line of this call and hearing that grave news and knowing that your grandmother does not have the right health insurance coverage and therefore, ladies and gentlemen, could be faced with a bill up to $250,000 or more? Ladies and gentlemen, we as Team Affirmative here are here to affirm the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, if your grandmother was on future care, that huge bill that would have been in front of her, ladies and gentlemen, could be cut down to a minimum because overseas coverage would be covered as well as prescription drugs for afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, we as Team Affirmative here are here to strongly, strongly urge you that future care is good enough due to the benefits that are offered as well as due to everything that is covered underneath future care, ladies and gentlemen. The motion before us today is that future care is not good enough, and we as Team Affirmative is good enough, and we as Team Affirmative are here to strongly affirm that it is. We as Team Affirmative define some of the following facts. Good enough, as expressed as contentment and satisfaction. Future care as a comprehensive health care plan with seniors solely in mind. First, let me give you a basic understanding of future care, ladies and gentlemen. You see, future care was designed to be comprehensive and affordable health plan with seniors solely in mind. It was, a, it was designed to be affordable, but not just free. It was not meant to compete with major medical plans, but to offer better coverage than HIP, ladies and gentlemen. The points that will be laid out by Team Affirmative are, I, first speaker, will talk on how future care was developed for seniors and not meant to have any profit entity, ladies and gentlemen. Future care is a positive development and an improvement on HIP, and without it, they, seniors would have to pay considerably more for almost inferior benefits. My second speaker will discuss again how seniors, how future care was developed with seniors solely in mind, how future care sustainability, and how future care is comprehensive. With these points, we will demonstrate that future care is good enough, and therefore we will have fulfilled the obligation of this debate, ladies and gentlemen, and will have fulfilled the obligation that has been bestowed upon us and should win this debate. You see, future care has been misunderstood. Its main purpose has been altered and changed by those who are doubtful, ladies and gentlemen. It is my job and the job of my second speaker here to inform you correctly and have you leave here today with a clear understanding of what future care is all about. And so with that, I move on to my constructive. You see, in 2009, our country took a daring turn for the worse. Ladies and gentlemen, seniors were being fired left and right from their employers and forced to search for health insurance, private health insurance plans all over. You see, they went to BFNM in Argus and they were told worldly prices like $1,200 a month or even $1,500 a month. And for a senior with an income of $36,000 a year, ladies and gentlemen, we find this to be absolutely preposterous. And so did our government. Our government decided, how can we help our seniors? And so they implemented well, a health care plan called future care accepted uh, thirty six thousand dollars a year are you suggesting that each month seniors have a pension of about nine thousand five hundred dollars no I'm not I'm suggesting that see, that seniors are paid from pension thirty six thousand dollars a year and so that's why a worldly price as twelve hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars would be way too much to pay for them a month 
You see, ladies and gentlemen, Future Care has absolutely no discriminations. Even if, you, if you're over 65, you are accepted onto Future Care. Future Care has no limitations to previous conditions. If you have cancer, you will be accepted onto Future Care. We do not discriminate at all. You see, because Future Care was developed solely in seniors with seniors in mind. And Which as our seniors get old and get ill, they need the right health insurance coverage. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, as us being government and saying, let's implement this Future Care, we decided to make sure that there are absolutely no discriminations would you not agree William actually I would not agree you, you keep on going on and on about how this future care plan was directly for seniors and for seniors only seniors are over the age of 60 and there is actually discrimination in future care there's discrimination for a sister of a grandmother who is on future care who was born just a year or a month later in December they are discriminated I understand against your point I understand your point William but I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say is that future care is built, is built solely for seniors in mind and when I say that they are accepted due to no previous conditions they are accepted due to to no previous conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, with Future Care, you don't have to worry about your premiums rising to worldly prices, ladies and gentlemen. The premiums for Future Care are in phase one, 385, and on phase two and three, 635. And in our opinion, ladies and gentlemen, as Team Affirmative not accepted at this point. time, in our opinion, as Team Affirmative, we strongly, strongly urge that this, ladies and gentlemen, is good enough. You see, surveys have been. Point, no not accepted at this time. You see, surveys have been conducted throughout Future Care to find out how our um, policyholders were feeling. In 2010, 74% said that they were very happy. And then in 2011, again, 88% said that they felt the same. In 2011, a survey evidenced that 63% in 2010 and 88% in 2011 and on that point, proved that policyholders, customer service was excellent. Accepted? Wouldn't you also agree that seniors said it should the, that same study showed a 19 percent increase on uh, how seniors felt that future care was not affordable um i would not agree with that statement because there is a statistic proven that future care policyholders were actually quite impressed with the fact that their premium stayed at 365 on phase one and then in phase two 200 phase two and three 635 they felt as though this evidence that their premiums were quite low for the benefits that they were receiving Ladies and gentlemen, you see, in 2010, 63%, and in 2011, 84%, said that the no level of knowledge from, a co from their customer service representative was excellent. The Ladies and gentlemen, that much feedback from a policyholder base of around 600 on HIP and 3,000 on future care, we find to be absolutely extraordinary, ladies and gentlemen. And this states and affirms the motion today that future care is good enough. Ladies and gentlemen, before I close, I'd just like to ask you just this one question. You see, what health insurance options would seniors have if not for future care? It, sadly, we all know that the answer to that is not a very good one. They could either go without health care or they could go to HIP, which we will admit has limited benefits, or the private sector where they'll be told to pay worldly prices, ladies and gentlemen, for benefits that they could get on future care for much less. Ladies and gentlemen, first I'd like you to take into consideration what future care offers and how it differs from the private insurance. Insurance. You see, Future Care offers no discriminatories, as I have said, from joining Future Care. Future Care offers low, low premiums for benefits that are the same, or if not more, better than the private insurers. Ladies and gentlemen, Future Care has no discriminatories. If you're 65, 85, or 105, ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter. You can join Future Care. We cannot sit here and say that Future Care is perfect, ladies and gentlemen, because no health insurance out there is perfect. And no health insurance can meet the needs of every policyholder out there. But ladies and gentlemen, we can sit here and say that Future Care is good value for money. Future Care is everything that a senior needs in Bermuda. And as our government has implemented it, it has worked, ladies and gentlemen. Future Care is comprehensive. And ladies and gentlemen, we will affirm the motion once again that future care is good enough. It offers satisfaction and contentment, and that is what it's all about. Thank you.